It will change everything. DeepMind's AI makes gigantic leap in solving protein structures. So I guess all of you heard uh, about this uh, so far, or most of you. And uh, basically uh, what happened is that DeepMind uh, released, published their results uh, on this year's protein folding challenge. And their method AlphaFold, uh, actually the second iteration of uh, their algorithm AlphaFold, uh, kind of ruined the the whole like like beat everybody uh, and got the best scores and we can see so this is the the blog that they uh, published so far the, the, they still haven't published the paper uh, the paper will come probably in maybe maybe in a year or something because uh, the the last paper for the Alpha Fold one came out in December 2019 where the competition happened in 2018 so. We'll have to wait some time to get to that uh, to get the paper. And I basically can see the uh, the scores throughout the years. So that's a biennial uh, competition called CASP, and it happens. So it happens every every two years, and you can see here that uh, in 2018 their method AlphaFold one also dominated the competition, but this year they crossed uh, the 90 on this global distance test uh, metric which pretty much tells you how good the uh, the alignment between the experimentally found uh, protein structure and the computationally found comp uh, protein structures are. And I'll, I'll first, so the idea of this video will be to first uh, explain you what the problem is. So what the, what the protein uh, folding problem is, uh, give you a bit of about uh, like history and background of uh, and how proteins work and everything and then my idea is to go into the alpha fold one paper because that's what we have so far and I'll explain how it works how the deep learning method works so there'll be a deep uh, in-depth uh, explanation of the paper and uh, I'll give some uh, assumptions of what will happen with the alpha fold two what the method is they don't only have one chart so I'll try and uh, deduce something out of it so uh, basically, so what, why this is interesting uh, is that uh, 90 is, consi is considered as something that's that's like uh, if, if you if you get to 90 or above, you're pretty much uh, uh, comparable to experimental methods. The reason being, they are also not perfect, and they they, they do have their like measuring uh, uncertainties. Uh, so here we can see. Let me zoom in a bit. Here we can see. Uh, like what the what the problem is basically the green thing is the pseudo uh, ground truth so that means uh, uh, somebody uh, found uh, that one using some of the experimental methods and I'll I'll tell you a bit more about those and the 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 blue one so the blue one is a computational prediction that DeepMind's AlphaFold two uh, made and you can see it's pretty pretty close. Uh, the results are really, really good. And you can see 90.7, 93.3, and these are just the names of the proteins T1049, whatever. So let me uh, kind of step back a little bit here and tell you something about like how the problem came to be. So we've been trying to solve this problem in biology for 50 years already. And so this is kind of a really big, big thing that happened. So uh, yeah, the, the hype is real this time. Uh, first of all, uh, there's this guy called uh, Christian Anfinson, and uh, you can see in 1972 he gave this Nobel, uh, uh, Nobel Prize uh, lecture. So he basically got his Nobel Prize because he, uh, he showed that uh, the function of the protein is pretty much uniquely determined by its 3D structure, which is really interesting. So here is a really cool example of hemoglobin. So basically, like the structure is made so that th this protein, the hemoglobin, has a small pocket where this molecule that has a, like an iron uh, atom which binds to like the oxygen and thus transports oxygen throughout our, our body, like just that molecule fits so nicely in this hemoglobin. So, so that's a really plastic example of how the structure uh, determines the, the function. That's a pretty obvious one. So there's this cool example of this molecule that has this Y shape and uh, the molecule attaches to bacteria or viruses and thus tags uh, those cells for destruction in the immune system. So let me give you just a brief example of how the proteins are, are created. So 
Um, I like to think of this as a, as like a as, as like kitchen, uh, where the ribosome uh, is basically this macromolecule acts as a cook. Uh, we have the messenger RNA, which is pretty much the receipt, uh, and then we have amino acids, which are the ingredients, uh, which are transported by this thing called uh, the transport uh, RNA. So basically, the messenger RNA contains this linear sequence of uh, amino acids, and it gets translated. Uh, so it gets uh, so the receipt gets by this ribosome and we form like a chains of, of, of proteins which slowly start folding because different uh, different parts different amino acids have different charges and so they attract or, or repel and thus we get that 3d structure so that's basically how how the how the how the protein is formed and now we're trying to figure out this 3d structure computationally now the thing is how did we how the people uh, f find uh, the 3d structures now that we know that it's really important for the uh, like the uh, for figuring out the function of the proteins, how do we find the structure uh, of the protein? So there are three methods that are used uh, extensively in uh, different labor uh, in different labs, and those are mainly X-ray diffraction, uh, nuclear magnetic resonance, and uh, this electron microscopy. And as you can see, uh, the X-ray diffraction was so far uh, had. The, the, the highest amount of proteins were like protein structures were determined using this method although it does has its own flaws it cannot uh, solve uh, so depending on the size of the protein it has its constraints so you can't solve everything now these two are getting m more popular lately but they are still super expensive and really slow methods uh, to to obtain the the 3D structure, so that's why the computational uh, biology and this these computational methods for figuring out the structure were so important. So if we take a look at this chart here, we can see that the number of proteins we sequenced successfully sequenced uh, is around 200 million now in 2020. So it's been rising uh, like so. Those are the linear sequences that are encoded in the DNA. So, but we still don't have the 3D structure for all of those. And if we take a look at this chart, uh, we can see there is this thing called a protein database, which is really important because that's the data uh, set that's been used in the AlphaFold um, AlphaFold paper. And we'll get to it in a, in a couple of minutes. But basically, here you can see that, um, like, uh, uh, we we have so we have a lot of sequences being. Um, uh, Kind of ingested into this data set, but the, the the number of structures is actually a lot smaller. So here, 2020, we can see only 12,000 uh, structures are 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 there, but we only but we have like much more uh, sequences. So so that, that was the motivation for why we wanna um, why we wanna accelerate the pace of uh, finding 3D structures. The experimental one is slow; it's really expensive. So yeah, we we need we need an alternative. So again, why we care about uh, figuring out the structure, the 3D structure of the protein is because, as, as you can see on DeepMind's blog, an error in the genetic recipe may result in a malformed protein which could result in disease or death for an organism. Many diseases, therefore, are fundamentally linked to proteins. So uh, diseases like uh, diabetes, uh, like dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Cancer, some of the diseases that are known to be like plaguing the the like the humankind for 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 decades or or more, uh, can probably be solved by just uh, uh, us knowing the three D structures. So that's why it's super important. To, so this that's why this problem is super important. Uh, aside from that, also we could uh, develop much better materials if we if we knew how to construct and understand the the shapes of different proteins, and we could create like plastic eating enzymes. Uh, and thus uh, reduce the pollution, like on the on the like global level, uh, which is something we do care about, obviously. So that was the background story. It was a bit longer. Uh, I assume most of my like uh, audience is uh, like machine learning uh, with has machine learning background so I felt I need to really give you a, a nice overview of what the problem is and everything that goes inside and like the, so give you some numbers and methods etc. So uh, let's start exploring the alpha fold one now. As you can see here, uh, this is an animation that DeepMind provided, uh, which basically shows uh, how uh, during their optimization procedure, which we'll uh, get to in a sec, uh, 
like folds the proteins so, so it starts from a semi like unfolded uh, protein uh, protein strand which then um, slowly uh, takes its 3d shape uh, in space okay let's overview the alpha fold uh, one paper uh, you can see so the title is alpha fold improved protein structure prediction using potentials from deep learning uh, they had like a bunch of folks uh, working on this project as it's as it's pretty common for for huge projects like this one um, so it, they started in 2016 so it's already been like a four-year effort of many smart people uh, so I already mentioned it's DeepMind they're based in London and okay so the paper is pretty complicated there's a lot of text and a lot of uh, domain knowledge so I'll just try and extract the deep learning side of it and hopefully that will give you like a, a good understanding of how the method works um, let's start with this chart so uh, basically they, they on this uh, chart here they just show that they are better than other groups so many other uh, research groups were participating in this uh, in 2018 in cusp, cusp 13 uh, challenge that, that was the name of the challenge um, and uh, basically the green lines represent uh, the like the groups uh, those other groups and the blue line is deep mind and so on the um, basically on the x-axis we have something called TM score so there are a bunch of metrics for um, determining how good the structure prediction is so one is TM uh, there are other scores like we saw the global distance test score uh, there are some like uh, uh, IDDT or something yeah there are a lot of different scores and uh, basically so FM domain count domain is uh, some like fancy name for for protein pretty much um, so here in this uh, free modeling domain uh, we have um, uh, we had 43 uh, sequences which we needed to figure the structure for and you can see that uh, on average uh, the the deep mind had a lot higher TM score than others so that's what this uh, thing is and now I should probably uh, tell you what what the difference between free modeling and template modeling is so template modeling is when you're trying to uh, predict the structure for a sequence uh, that has similar sequences whose structure we already know. Now, uh, the thing is, once you know uh, some some similar sequence, uh, you can uh, kind of uh, assume that the structure of your of your sequence will be similar to that one. So you just need to find where the like the sequence differs and tweak. Uh, kind of tweak the the structure so starting from that maybe that structure so that's a template modeling so I'm I'm simplifying a little bit here but like that's that's the the rough notion uh, again here um, on this chart they just displayed uh, five different proteins and they again showed that like the the blue dots that DeepMind is uh, crushing it I mean the, so these two were bragging uh, charts so now now let's get to to the actual uh, to the actual method. And this is how it looks like. We can see some um, neural network here, of course, and that's actually uh, ResNet uh, with dilated convolutions. And so, basically, before I get into those details, there there are pretty much um, let me see um, three parts of this pipeline. So the first one is preparing uh, the features that we'll need in order to uh, predict the structure. Uh, then the second part is the uh, distance and uh, torsion angle predictions and I'll tell you what those are in, in a minute. So that's the second part of pipeline and then we have the gradient uh, descent uh, or the opti nonlinear optimization uh, part of the pipeline. So in stage one they, uh, they somehow find a way to go from 1D amino acid sequence that represents the protein uh, to 2D uh, 2D map and the, the 2D map uh, actually contains covariations between 
our target se uh, sequence and similar sequence from this uh, huge data set of sequences. And so this is the, this uh, thing called multi-sequence alignment. So you basically find uh, a group of sequences, like thousand sequences, which which are similar to your target sequence, which you're trying to predict the structure for, and you encode the covariations in these maps. So if I take one uh, point on this uh, 2D map, and this is 2D volume, so this will be like like 500 or something channels or more. Uh, there are some details down in the paper. So uh, one thing they encode is like the one hot encoding of the amino uh, am amino acid. So basically, uh, that means that if we take this point, so that's uh, let me zoom in. So, oops. So basically, uh, let's say this is like uh, row five, and let's say this is like row I don't know 40. Um, they'll basically uh, encode five as as a one. Um, they'll basically find what the fifth amino acid is, and because we have only twenty one amino acids in human in human uh, genome, um, we'll 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 encode uh, this. Let's say this is because because there are twenty one, we can um, represent each one with a letter from the alphabet. Uh, Luckily, we have uh, 26 letters, so let's say this one is, I don't know, the fifth one is uh, amino acid A, uh, this uh, 40th is maybe, I don't know, like S, and they just encode this one as as a one hot, let's say this one will be like uh, zeros, and then on some spot like 13, I don't know, they'll have one, etc. So what they will do is they will concatenate this one hot vector with uh, one hot vector that uh, corresponds to amino acid A, and there will be a part of the features they are using. There is a much more uh, like domain domain specific things they are including. Also, they're including these uh, multi sequence alignment things, and I'll probably explain those a bit uh, a bit more. I'll go into detail about those because that's interesting a bit later. So that's that's how they get the this uh, 3D volume, uh, and now you can treat this as a simple computer vision problem. And they pretty much use this uh, uh, like classic uh, deep learning model, like ResNet, with the dilated convolutions, uh, and treat this as a like a image to image uh, translation problem. So uh, the network itself, as you, as you can see, has kernels of size of size 64 by 64. So they are just um, actually randomly sliding across this volume, and they end up uh, getting the distance predictions. Okay, so what is this distance map, and how do we get one? So in order to understand that, I, I have to make a small tangent here and explain how the amino acids connect, and uh, which distances and torsion angles are we actually measuring? So, uh, so these are all the twenty-one um, amino acids we have in uh, in the human in the human genome. And basically, uh, so as you can see, this part is always always the same for every single amino acid, no matter uh, the properties. This group always this part always remains the same. So uh, this thing here is called something called like. I think alpha uh, alpha carbon atom. This one is called beta carbon atom, and that one is really important. So uh, let's say, for the sake of argument, that we have a sequence like R H K, which is pretty much these three amino acids here. So what will happen is uh, once they start going through the ribosome, they'll start connecting. And so these parts will form the backbone. So these parts and the groups, which is this part that goes off from the from the beta carbon atom. Those will be like, for example, some will be positively charged. Maybe this one uh, will be negatively charged. So what will happen is that they'll start attracting. And that's the thing that co that causes the uh, the protein to fold. So imagine if you had like a protein that had 140 amino acids. So what we, what could happen is that in this complex um, like interaction, uh, maybe the first 
maybe the 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 the, the, the first uh, amino acid would be like uh, in the 3D structure would be really close to maybe 127th amino acid. So that means we have a long range dependencies uh, in this in this structure. So now uh, when we are so I mentioned distance map. So what we are actually um, uh, looking for is uh, distance between beta carbon atoms between different amino acids. So basically, um, that's that's what that's what we are looking at. And then we have uh, torsion angles, so uh, phi and psi angles, which are um, basically in that three D structure two angles that we care about. Let me see if I can find a nice visualization of that. And you can see it here, hopefully. Let me zoom in. So this is the uh, protein chain. And so one of the two dihedral uh, angles inside here without getting into uh, too much explanation is two angles that we care about. So for the sake of argument, just think there are two angles we care about. There is third, but that, that one is almost always 180. So DeepMind kind of uh, hard-coded that one to be 180 and they're just considering uh, uh, these two. So, okay, let me get back to the one note. So now that we know uh, uh, this information about how we calculate distance and phi and psi angles. Let's go back to the uh, deep learning uh, pipeline. So uh, basically, you can see here uh, you, we have we we have um, um, amino acids here, and we we have the same sequence here. And so th this particular point maybe corresponds uh, to uh, f finding the. <clears throat> So I'll actually use a different drawing, which will probably be a bit easier to understand. Okay, let me see if I can nicely explain uh, the distance uh, maps. Um, so we have the um, experimentally found the pseudo ground truth uh, distance map for this particular uh, amino acid sequence. And we have the predicted uh, distance map uh, over here. So basically, what they showed here is they took a specific amino acid from the sequence, like, uh, in particular, they took 29th amino acid. And that's uh, depicted on these charts by these uh, red uh, stripes. And um, basically, uh, you can see uh, that the distance between 29th uh, carbon uh, uh, beta, beta carbon and um, be, with itself is obviously zero, which is this uh, colored with yellow. Uh, and over the whole main diagonal is going to be yellow for that specific, for that particular reason, because um, the distance between a beta carbon and itself is always going to be zero. So that's why we see this pattern along the main diagonal. And what it did here is uh, they took they took uh, the neighborhood uh, for, from the 29th um, amino acid and they just extracted all of the 41 uh, distances and that's the chart on the right. And now the thing is, uh, these things here are not scalars, they're actually probability distributions. So if we take maybe, I don't know, 40th uh, probability distribution, prob uh, 40th amino acid and its corresponding uh, probability distribution, we end up with something like this. And you can see on the x-axis we have the distance and on the y-axis we have the probability. So this particular um, like uh, position has, uh, we can see that the distribution is somewhere like the peak is pretty much around like four angstroms, where angstrom is 0 0.1 um, nanometer. So this is the, how they uh, symbolize the angstrom. And the red bar is the ground truth value. So the red bar says, I don't know, like five, and we predicted four, which is pretty good. Uh, if we take a look at, because 29 is missing, obviously, because we know that uh, it's going to be, have a spike on the zero uh, distance. 
basically if we take a look at the surrounding uh, probability distributions so those are th those correspond to this part here um, basically distributions are really narrow and uh, really precise so we can see that the peak the mode of the distribution corresponds perfectly to the red bars here also really nice as we go further apart further away uh, we can see that um, the red bars don't correspond always with the like with the mode of the distribution so say let me take an example where we have some problems like here like this one is a good example because uh, we predicted that the distance is here so that's whatever this value is but the red bar is here so yeah um, by the way these black lines um, is the cut cut of uh, length distance uh, when we consider the the the, the two carbon um, beta carbon atoms to be in contact so if we are so this one is at eight angstrom so if you fall below eight angstrom we consider those two beta carbon atoms to be in contact otherwise they are they are not uh, in, in contact obviously so those are basically uh, so the map is basically the the like the inter residue uh, distances for the uh, amino uh, sequence and we want to predict obviously uh, as close as possible to the ground truth so let me now go back to our initial uh, deep learning pipeline if i can get there okay we're here so we we do a similar thing for for the uh, for torsion angles and once we have those maps uh, what we now do is we uh, form a geometric model of the of our sequence meaning uh, we basically take uh, like we have a geometric model and we have two arguments we have the phi and we have psi so the torsion angles and those gives us give us the like 3d coordinates of those um, beta carbon atoms in 3d space uh, so what I mean by that, so if we have a, like a sequence of length 100, we'll have 200 parameters here. And uh, basically for one specific configuration of these 2L uh, torsion angles, we get, a, we get a specific configuration in 3D space, like I don't know, like we, we'll have some thing going on in space. And uh, so what this part does is we are optimizing, so we are changing these two so that uh, the 3D coordinates or the corresponding 3D structure gets as close as possible to uh, the to the gray one. So th this one is the native, the experimentally found structure. So what happens is by tweaking these uh, phi and psi angles, we are uh, also tweaking. You can you can imagine like we are tweaking the distance map uh, for this particular configuration. So for a given phi and psi, we have a given distance map, uh, which which uh, which we are trying to uh, to uh, to match with this one. So the two parts of the pipeline are pretty much independent. The second pipeline, so the second part of the pipeline just uh, figures out. Uh, figures out the depth map uh, and the torsion maps and then the the the, the third part uh, of the pipeline uh, just tries and tweaks this differentiable uh, G model so that we uh, minimize the distance and we can see on this chart here that the TM score as we are it did the, I'm losing my cursor my god uh, the TM score is going uh, uh, down as we are progressing with our optimization steps and uh, sorry that the the RMSD that's the uh, one one of the metrics that they use to figure out whether the 3d structures are are like uh, getting closer together and the TM score on the other ha hand is uh, going upwards what's else interesting so they, they just took a snapshot here and we can we can see how the how it's progressing and slowly getting into the final shape, which is really close to the gray one here. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, the and I didn't mention this because those details were probably not as relevant as now. Uh, so the the protein has uh, something called 
the the primary, the secondary, the tertiary, and the quaternary uh, like uh, structure. The primary structure is just the amino sequence. The secondary structure are those things that form spontaneously, like the this thing. It's called alpha helix, and then we have uh, these things here, which are called beta sheets, and uh, then those are forming in these intricate like shapes, which are the tertiary structure of the protein, and finally the qu uh, the, the qu quarter tertiary quaternary. Let me actually use uh, this shot; it, it will be easier to understand what I'm talking about. So we have the primary structure here. Uh, then we have the secondary structures which form so alpha helixes and these pleated or beta sheets Then they form in this uh, thing called like the tertiary structure and finally um, Multiple proteins can interact and that's the the quaternary structure. I hope I'm pronounce, pronouncing that well so that's about the, the shapes and aside from uh, the, the distance map I already showed you um, uh, this pipeline is also predicting uh, these secondary shapes. So the the the, the blue one is the, uh, the 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 alpha helix, and the red one is the beta uh, the beta um, beta beta sheet. So uh, this is the ground truth, the pseudo ground truth, uh, and uh, these here are taken is a snapshot taken from the last optimization step. And we can see that the modes, uh, pretty much, uh, we are pre pretty uh, well co correlated with the ground truth, and thus the, the final 3D shape is uh, also uh, good. Also coincides with the experimentally found shape. Whew! That was that was uh, that was that was crazy. Now there is one more question: How do we initialize the the phi's and the psi's initially? Uh, and what they did is they, they used those uh, predicted torsion angles, which are not depicted here. They only showed the distance map. And they sample from those distributions to get the initial like uh, uh, configuration. You can see it here. This is the initial one. And uh, it's getting crowded here. <laughs> um, so basically, that's how they initialize this. They randomly sample from that distribution, and then they do the optimization. But now uh, what they... Uh, what they do, they do one more thing. That's they 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 keep a pool of um, of final structures. So they keep like a twenty uh, final structures. So uh, whatever they get at the at the end of these optimization procedures, uh, they they minimize the potential and they just keep those uh, in this pool. And then they also sample from that pool. So they take one of these minimal configurations and they randomly add noise to phi's and psi's, so they kind of uh, get uh, experimentally showed that they are getting, th those are uh, giving them better initializations than just uh, randomly sampling from those torsion angle maps. So that's one more detail I wanted to mention. And now we have the whole pipeline hopefully uh, uh, in place. Let me go once more uh, like the high level thing. We have the features related to amino acids. We do a uh, uh, basically convolutions uh, over uh, over those uh, input maps. We get the distance maps, we get the torsion angles, we get these uh, secondary structure predictions. And once we have those, we, we just uh, freeze it. And then we have an independent step, and that's the gradient descent optimization. Uh, they used LBFGS, actually. Forgot to mention that detail. And uh, they uh, basically... Uh, are tweaking the phi's and psi's so that the geometric model, the 3D coordinates, are getting in a configuration which will produce uh, distance maps similar to the one that we got that we got here. So that's a high-level overview of how it all fits together. Okay, that was the overview of the AlphaFold 1. Uh, hopefully that was uh, useful. I know there was a lot of details. Um, let that sink in. Um, so regarding the AlphaFold 2, uh, that's the main topic today, but uh, we don't know much. So this is what we what we uh, got from, from DeepMind. So we trained this system on public available data consisting of 170,000 protein structures from the protein data bank. So we already mentioned uh, this one. 
uh, together with large bases, blah, blah, blah. And so they, they, they used um, 128 TPU V3 cores for, for maybe a couple of weeks to train this thing. And um, basically, this is, this is the, the diagram they gave us uh, and the paper. So uh, they are preparing a paper uh, to submit for a peer-reviewed uh, journal. And let me let me let me see what I can deduce from from this uh, chart alone. So basically, um, what I expect here, and they men they mentioned spa spatial graphs in the blog. So I won't get into any assumptions aside from 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 this one. Once the paper c comes out, I'll I'll I'll, I'll cover it. But uh, for now, let me just um, try and see what we can deduce here. So basically what I expect to happen is because they were using um, like uh, only 40, 40, uh, six by, uh, 64 by 64 uh, cov maps here is that, so basically you have the amino sequence. That's a bad uh, depiction of amino sequence. And um, basically until now they could only model um, they couldn't model the long range dependencies like throughout the sequence. They could only take chunks. So, so it's basically a form of local attention. So um, they could maybe model uh, like uh, amino acids that lie close together if we are on the uh, main diagonal here. So that's so if we if if the conv map is currently maybe here, that's when we model. That's when we modeled uh, like the like uh, local local attention of uh, of of close by uh, amino acids. If the uh, if the cov map is maybe here, then what happens is the following: um, we can model maybe this group and this group and all the interactions between them. Like this one corresponds to this one and this one, etc. So it becomes a mess really quick. But uh, basically what I expect uh, they will do is they will use transformers and they'll just uh, have, so they are other use, uh, they'll, they'll probably use some, some uh, efficient uh, transformer. A lot of them came out this year, like, uh, I don't know, informer, performer, reformer, uh, fill in the blank. Uh, and basically uh, they'll, um, they won't uh, ha have to, to create these inductive biases that we currently have. And that's the like the intrinsic property of convolutional neural networks. Um, yeah, that was that was it about the the, the second paper. I won't get to any more, any more details. I just want to uh, tell you about some really cool uh, repercussions uh, that the system will have uh, in the like uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. Um, so basically, they they already helped um, us find structures of certain proteins uh, that uh, we. D that we that are present in in the in the SARS-CoV-2 virus. One of those is ORF 3A protein, and what they can do is they can accelerate the pace of experimental methods. They can um, they can predict the structure, and then they can help the experimentation labs uh, figure out the structure much much faster than by doing it from scratch. So, yeah, th that was that was that was it. Uh, Hopefully uh, you found this video insightful. Uh, if you did, uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video. And until next time, keep learning deep.